He is risen. He is risen indeed. A few announcements on this Easter Sunday. Boy, it is good to be in the house of the Lord with you on this very special and holy day as we gather together to worship a Savior who is alive. Amen. Amen. In your bulletin, you'll see a triple L fish fry coming up Friday the 29th. Uh, that's at 6 p.m. at the home of Larry and Linda Bruce. Also, we have graduation recognition, or graduate, it should be graduate recognition Sunday, okay. Uh, for for uh, three, three of ours, uh, Joshua, Isaac, and Haley. And so that's coming up on May 15th. Keep that in your in your head there. Also, we have gone uh, past our goal uh, for North American Mission Board missionaries, our Annie Armstrong Easter offering. Uh, and so I applaud you. I thank you for giving to that because that keeps our missionaries on the field. Uh, we have a wonderful system in which we are able to keep our missionaries on the field where they are. They don't have to come home and come to our church and uh, tell us that they need a little money to make it and pay bills and stuff like that. They don't have to do all that. They can stay where they are, and you enable them to do this uh, by giving to the Annie Armstrong Easter offering as well as the Lottie Moon uh, Christmas offering and the Georgia Barnett State Missions offering. So that's what happens uh, when you give to those offerings. Uh, you ensure that the message of this day continues to be shared around the world. Let's see. I believe we have uh, also in your bulletin a, an insert. Uh, there is an organization, a ministry called the Jerusalem Prayer Team International. Uh, and Mike Evans, uh, Dr. Mike Evans is uh, head of that ministry. Uh, and they, are, they were already in uh, Ukraine helping Jews there that were being displaced. And so they, they were already there helping, in fact, with just humanitarian issues uh, with the Jewish people that live there. And so they are really in need of help now. And this ministry helps those. Uh, you can read this, uh, and I would encourage you to think about giving to that, pray about that. Uh, but this man, is, his organization is already there on the ground and was there before, before even we got there as Southern Baptists to help uh, to just reach out our arms to all Ukrainians. But uh, his ministry specifically to those Jews who have been uh, displaced, you may have seen some information on television about that. Uh, it's very disturbing um, to, to, see that, to see a certain group of people, uh, any people, uh, being discriminated against, uh, and so pray, pray for that ministry, pray about giving to that ministry. If there's a portion of your bulletin, uh, if you can tear that off this morning, uh, you can pl place that in the box in the foyer. Uh, take your time there and just tear that off, and, and we'd like to know that you were here this morning worshiping with us. We also have a, uh, we have a video that shares just a little bit uh, about our North American Mission Board missionaries and the specific uh, a specific missionary that we can look at and learn about this morning. So let's do that now. I was raised in a Christian home, but I gave my parents a really hard time. And so I finally decided to join the military because I wanted to do something hard and actually finish it. And it was actually towards the end of my military service when I gave my life to Christ. And having spent time in the army, I know uh, that it can be a really spiritually dark place. They're young, they're far from family for the first time. They don't have maybe a lot of good influences. A lot of broken homes, marriages struggling, addiction, a desperate need for the gospel. There's a lot of young Marines here and they're living in the barracks. When we started this church, we knew that that was an area that God was calling us to reach to host Marines for a Marine dinner once a month is where it started. To have something like a dinner that they can come to and just be themselves and sit on a couch and eat a warm meal is really impactful for them. More and more guys started coming and we baptized our first Marine last summer and then that Marine led to another Marine and then another one to the point now where every week we're seeing fruit. This church like means business. Uh, they don't, they are not okay with you just punching your church card every week. <laughs> the 
was obvious that this was a church that was doing church like the Bible says we should do church. I feel encouraged every time I go to church, like I wish every day was Sunday. When people give to Annie Armstrong, it enables churches like ours to reach military members and their families with the gospel. Washington, D.C. is a city with many, many nations. So to have a gospel-centered, healthy church here is reaching not only the people in this city, but cities all across the world. The military is already moving people around, and as they are moved from place to place, they can take the gospel with them. It's exactly what Jesus has called us to do, and God is changing people's lives. said to the women, do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. He is risen, just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay, and then go quickly and tell his disciples, he is risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Now I have told you. So the women hurried away from the tomb, afraid and yet filled with joy and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly, Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. They came to him, clasped his feet, and worshiped him. Father God, <coughs> I doubt if there is a person in this room, and perhaps in the sound of my voice, who does not believe in all of his heart and head that Jesus is alive, that he was raised and that he is alive today. And yet God, as these two women met Jesus in an intimately personal way, face to face, when he encountered them and said greetings, they had that experience and they fell at his feet and worshiped him. God, I believe it is possible for us to know with all of our minds that Jesus is alive, that he rose, that he is alive today, and yet to have not come to that personal face-to-face -face encounter and relationship with him that causes us to fall at his feet and worship him. So our purpose here today, in my, my humble heart's prayer, heart's desire, 
is that every one of us would meet Jesus face to face in an intimately personal way, encounter him, and fall at his feet to worship him. God, that's our purpose here today. That's our purpose as a church. That is our purpose as called out individuals to share Jesus that others may meet him. And God, it's possible for there to be some, every one of us in this room right now needs to continually have that experience again and again and again. So that is our desire. God, that happens by your grace and by your mercy. So God, I pray that today and each day this would be reality, that we would meet you, that we would have that personal relationship with you, and that we would worship you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God's love for us is so high and deep and wide that our Savior did not and could not endure being separated from us by what sin had done. And so he gave his life. He suffered and he died instead of us. He was buried. And then he defeated death and rose to life. Because he lives, we can live forever in him. All this Jesus did for us. It's why we will never get tired of singing his name in praise. What a name, the name above all others, the glorious name of Jesus. What a beautiful name. This morning we're going to sing that song. We'd like for you to join us on the chorus. The words will be up on the screen. What a beautiful name. What a wonderful name. And what a powerful name. You were the word at the beginning, one with God the Lord most high. Your hidden glory in creation, now revealed in you, our Christ. What, what a, a beautiful, beautiful name, name it is, what, what a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a beautiful name it is. Nothing compares to this. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus. You didn't want heaven without us. So Jesus, you brought heaven down my sin was great your love was greater what could separate us now what a wonderful name it is what a wonderful name it is the name of Jesus Christ my King what a wonderful name it is nothing compares to this what a wonderful name it is the name of Jesus what a wonderful name it is the name of Jesus death could not hold you the veil tore before you you silenced the boast of sin and grave the heavens are the praise of your glory for you are raised to life again you have no rival you have no equal now and forever God you reign yours is the kingdom yours is the glory yours is the name above all names what a powerful name it is what a powerful name it is the name of jesus christ my king what a 
powerful name it is. Nothing can stand against. What a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus. What a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus. What a powerful name it is. The name.
Hosanna to the King, the King of Kings. We're here on this Easter Sunday to celebrate the Christ who rose from the grave. We're here to remember what He did for us on that cross. We're here to remember what God did through His Son to make a way for us to have our sins forgiven. To make a way for us to be with Him in heaven forever. Forever. Would you go to the Lord and pray with me this morning? Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you. We bow our heads and our hearts before you. Thankful that we can. Thankful that we are able to gather together as your children. And to worship you. But Lord, today, oh wow. This is a special day, Father. This is, is, is a day where we focus on what you have done. You rose your son from the grave. He is not there. It is empty. Lord, you showed us. You showed us that you have conquered death, hell, and the grave, Father. You have done that. Only you could. None of us could do that. But, Father, you did. Lord, we pray for those who are not with us, those who may be in the hospital, those who may be suffering with an illness or an injury. Father, we ask that you bring healing to them. Father, bring them comfort and strength day by day. Lord, we pray beyond our own community and into the communities in Ukraine and other areas of our world that are, that are troubled and suffering. And Father, we ask... God, that you help them, give them strength, give them comfort. Help us to know what we can do to help. But Lord, there are people that are there. There are people that are near, that are your people, that are reaching out around them and helping. And God, I thank you. I thank you for people who listen to you and are obedient. I ask, Father, that we would be the same way, that we would listen to your voice and that we would be obedient when you call on us. Father, help us to always be sensitive to your voice in our lives. Thank you, God, for providing what you provided in salvation through Christ. Thank you for providing the continual guidance of your Holy Spirit in our lives. Helping us what, to know what to do, what not to do. Lord, we ask your blessings upon this time together this morning in worship. Father, may it be pleasing in your ears and in your eyes and in your heart. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Let's all join together and sing together hymns about the resurrection of our loving Savior and Lord. <coughs>
know, it's, uh, it's one thing to sing that in a service like this. It's one thing to say that Jesus lives in a place like this. But it's an entirely different situation when we go out into the community and we say those words. There are people who need to hear those words. There are people who need to know who Jesus is. Now, I'm not putting it past this choir. I'm sure that maybe somebody heard that beyond these walls this morning. <laughs> we praise the Lord today. We did, and we are. And I, I praise God for the opportunity to be able to praise Him. And I do pray that someone heard beyond these walls, but I'm afraid you and I are going to have to take it out and be out in our community and share those words with people that we come in contact with. It's going to take talking about Jesus and singing about Him out there for people to hear. For people to hear. Uh, when I was growing up, there was a time when you could just invite someone to church and they would come. One time, maybe it took two times to be invited, but they'd show up. And there was a, it was a different culture, it was a different era, a different time when people... It, it, well, let's say it was, uh, there was a social pressure out there to go to church. They, uh, you, you know, people, people looked good if they went to church. You know, it's, it was like, oh, well, oh, so-and-so, he, he, you know, he's the mayor or he's, the, you know, he's, he's a councilman or he, he owns this business. Oh, oh, you know, he goes to church and people think, oh, well, he's, he's a good person. And there was a socially acceptable, maybe even some social pressure back in the day. But now, in order for people to hear the good news of the gospel, we're going to have to take it to them. Have you ever run across someone whom you would label as being broken? Someone who is broken. Broken people appear to be and sometimes are angry at the world. Sometimes they are people who are negative all the time. Uh, I mean, I, you know, we have the phrases negative, negative Nelly, uh, but I'm sure there's some negative Nicks out there too. I'm sure there are just as many males that are negative in our world. And with these people that are broken, nothing is ever right with the world. Nothing is good. Everything that can be wrong is wrong. And many times they will point out those wrongs. Sometimes a broken person is one who just lives every day hoping to make it to bedtime. Because it's just so horrible, everything they see and look at, and they're just, they're suffering. Some people who are broken live with no hope for a future. There are broken people in our world. The first thing I want us to look at this morning are Good Friday people. Now, normally, you know that we go through a passage of Scripture when I preach. But this morning, we're taking a, a detour a little bit. We'll have several Scriptures. They will appear on the screen so you can see them uh, and not have to be flipping back and forth. Although, I would encourage you to flip back and forth. If you do not yet know where to find these, it might help give you some practice. <laughs> But Good Friday people, Good Friday people. Let's look first at Luke chapter 23, verse 48. And all the crowds who came together for this spectacle, when they observed what had happened, began to return beating their breasts. Now what had they seen? What had occurred? The death of Christ had occurred. And they observed what had happened and they, they returned beating their breasts. This is, this is a traditional and normal occurrence when someone passes away. There is this, this mourning, this pain, and it's so sad. And yet, this death was different in many ways. This man, Jesus, had not done anything to deserve this punishment that he received. Jesus was also not just any man. He was the Son of God. So it makes him different than everyone else who died on a cross. It is possible that those who beat their breasts were in agreement with the centurion. It's possible that some of them thought, oh no, 
Maybe this was the Son of God. You remember that's the centurion. He said, surely this was the Son of God. So maybe some of them as they left, maybe they got it. Maybe they understood and maybe they realized, oh no, we have made a mistake. Second, let us look at Mary Magdalene. Mary Magdalene. Mark chapter 16, verses 9 through 9 through 10. Now after he had risen early on the first day of the week, his first, he first appeared to Mary Magdalene, from whom he had cast out seven demons. She went and reported to those who had been with him while they were mourning and weeping. Now what, what, who are we talking about here? We're talking about Good Friday people here. Good Friday people. This is a time of pain. This is a time of suffering. The one whom they love, the one whom they followed, Jesus, had died. And this is no good thing in their eyes. So the disciples, they were mourning and weeping. This word here translated as weeping means to cry freely and profusely from sadness or distress. They were letting it out. How many of you have let it out recently? How many of you here, you don't have to raise your hand, but how many of you have just let it out? Sometimes it's good to just let it out. Let the tears fall. Let it out. Freely just let it out. Sometimes you may think, well, I'm not, I'm, 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 I'm not doing that in front of anybody. Well, find the place. Do you realize it is acceptable to cry? It's acceptable. When you are in sorrow, in mourning, it is acceptable. Again, let me remind you that those tears simply are proof of the love of the one you are crying for. It's just proof of your love for them. Let the tears fall. These these men were crying freely and profusely. There was a great sadness in their heart. They are in a state of distress. They've lost Jesus. He died. Oh, no. Oh, no. Listen to verse 11. When they heard that he was alive and had been seen by her, they refused to believe it. Their minds were on the loss of Jesus. At that point, his death was bigger than him in their eyes. Ah, but we know that he is bigger than death. We know that he's bigger than death. The disciples are Easter people who were still living in a Good Friday world. Jesus has risen and yet they're still living in this Good Friday world, this time, this world of sadness, this world of chaos, this world of distress. These were believers, these were Easter people, but they were living still in a time of sadness and chaos and distress. They heard he was alive, but they did not believe it. Some of us today are Easter people living in a Good Friday world. We see the pain and the mistreatment of others, and we, and we wonder if anything is going to be done about it. Is something going to be done that will stop this? Is something going to be done that will help these people here, there, wherever we're thinking Is something going to come to, is someone even going to come to their aid? We see the pain, the mistreatment of others. We watch the news sometimes too much. And we see the deep pain pain and suffering in our world. We find ourselves in a state of distress. And we as Easter people, we cease to live victoriously we cease to live victoriously we are Easter people living in a Good Friday world still because our focus is on the pain and the distress and the chaos and the suffering and we are Easter people living in a Good Friday world Robert Frost described some people one time as having nothing to look back on with pride and nothing to look forward to with hope. Truly, sometimes 
our lives are lived in a way that is not in any form convincing to others that Jesus actually is alive. Sometimes we live our lives as if Jesus died and stayed in the grave. And our lives do not show that we're Easter people. We live just along with the chaos and the pain and the suffering in our world. And we react just like the rest of those in the world who have no hope. We live with our minds knowing that Jesus rose from the dead. We live with our minds knowing that he is and was victorious over death, hell, and the grave. And yet we live with our hearts as if it is still Good Friday and he has gone. Some of us live day to day as if there's just no hope. Let me tell you something this morning. When we live in this world as if there is no hope, how in the world are we going to be able to give the only hope that people need and can receive if we're not living it? How in the world are we going to help someone have hope when they look at us and say, well, (laughs) this guy doesn't have hope. Look how he lives. He's just like us. We're all the same. We're all suffering and and the pain that's in our world and all all these, you know, we get all just worried and upset about things. And they're no, these Christian people, they're no different. Ooh, we're no different. I mean, what do they, they're going to look at us and if they're looking for hope, where are they going to find it? Where? Where are they going to find it? Some people do not know that Jesus rose from the dead. Some people are living in a good Good Friday world of suffering and distress because they do not know that there is hope. They do not know that Jesus conquered death, hell, and the grave. They do not know, and they need to know. But they do not know, and they're living as Good Friday people in a Good Friday world because that's all they know. They don't know there's another choice. They have no hope. They don't have the hope of Christ. And so they're just living. They're just trying to make it. They're hoping that the next day's better than the last. And they're just hoping that somehow things will work out. But they don't have the hope of Christ. They don't have, they don't have the Holy Spirit of God living inside of them that is telling them, look, I'm leading you and guiding you, and look, you've got a God who loves you and cares for you, and He will do that with you. He will do that for you. He is with you. With, and again, with the presence of God comes His power. With the presence of God comes His forgiveness. With the presence of God comes His love. With the presence of God comes His kindness, His gentleness, and my goodness, His long-suffering. Oh, my goodness. Patience is something we are short of many times. And yet God has it. God's got it. He has long suffering. He can put up with a lot of our mess. He waits on us. He waits on us. Are you an Easter person living in a Good Friday world? Or are you a Good Friday person who needs the hope of Christ? You're one or the other, or maybe you're another that we're going to look at in a few moments. You could be an Easter person living in a Good Friday world, or you could be a Good Friday person who needs the hope of Christ. Well, those are Good Friday people we're looking at. Listen to the Easter people, Easter people. In 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 3, we find these celebratory words. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to His great mercy has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Listen, Easter people, Easter people, they live not in a state of distress, but in a state of living hope. 
Easter people are God's people and they have a living hope. It is an assured hope. That's the best way I can explain it. It is an assured hope. They know that Jesus has conquered death and because he has, all who believe will not die but will live eternally with him. That's what the Bible teaches. Who are Easter people? They are God's people. Listen to Paul's letter to the Roman Christians. Now if we have died with Christ, we believe we shall also live with Him. Knowing that Christ, having been raised from the dead, is never to die again. Death no longer is master over Him. For the death that He died, He died to sin once for all. But the life that he lives, he lives to God. Even so, consider yourselves to be dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. Easter people are people who have died with Christ and live with him. They live with him every day. They're walking with him. They're living with him. He is a part of their lives. Not just someone we visit on Sunday. He's a part of our lives. Easter people are people who believe that Jesus only had to die once for their sins. They are people who live victoriously with the help of Christ. That's who Easter people are. They live victoriously. They get through things, around things, over things because God helps them. Because they're leaning on Him. They're not looking at the big problem and saying, oh, it's just way too big. No, no. Easter people focus on God and say, oh, oh, He is bigger than it all. Oh, man, God is bigger than this. Whatever it is I'm going through, God can handle this. And I'm putting my faith in Him. I'm not looking at the problem saying, oh, well, it's just too big. I'm looking at the Lord. Easter people consider themselves dead to sin. How in the world? Well, they are people who look at sin and they have the ability to look away from the outstretched hands of whatever sin is in your life. It is out, Look, the sin in your life reaches out to you. It reaches out to you all the time. And a child of God has the ability, is enabled by the Holy Spirit of God to look away. From those hands that are outreached from that sin. And look away and say, no, that's not who I am. I'm dead to that. That is not who I am. I'm, a, I'm an Easter person. I'm a child of God. And through His power we're able to say no to sin. They are people who will not die as a punishment. For their sin. That's who Easter people are. God's people are people who will not die because of their sin. When Easter people die, it is a door they pass through into the eternal glory of the presence of God Himself. Oh man, wow. Isn't that amazing? Easter people endure pain. Yes, they endure suffering. But in the heart of an Easter person beats the hope of Christ that reminds them in the words of the author of Hebrews. And do not neglect doing good and sharing. For with such sacrifices God is pleased. Easter people live for Christ. That's who they are. They, they live knowing that death has been overcome. They live knowing that God has provided the way to be with Him in heaven forever. And they live a victorious life. Does that mean, Brother Craig, that if you have Jesus in your heart, that everything will always go real smooth? No. What it means is when the bumps come, you can handle it because you're walking with Christ. That's what it means. That, it means you don't fall apart and just give up. It means you have a hope, an assured hope that is in Jesus that says, look, I've got you. I've got you. I've got you. That's what Jesus says to us. I've got you. I've got your back. I'm here with you. We're going to walk through this. We're going to walk around this. I'm going to deliver you from this. One way or another, we're going to make it. 
We're going to make it because Christ is with you. That's who Easter people are. They care for others as well. They meet the needs of others. Oh my goodness, I was watching just this week a video of people who, uh, some, some of our Southern Baptist disaster relief people who had made it over and were helping with refugees in the Ukraine. And just the, just the blessing, they were able to be just with their presence, just with their outstretched hands, just with a, a piece of food, some water, something just to say, hey, we care, God cares. What a blessing to see. We meet the needs of others because that's who we are as God's children. That's who Easter people are. They live each day with the knowledge that they are loved by God. Oh, I wish I could wake up. I, I, boy, it would scare you slap silly. If, I, if you woke up and I was standing over you and I said, God loves you, just wanted to make sure you remember that. Boy, wouldn't that, it would, wouldn't it? It really would scare you. Brother Craig, what are you doing in my house? How'd you get in? But I wish I could do that with you and for you. I wish I could just hover over you every morning and just remind you of the presence of God and the love of God for you. Boy, I wish I could do that. But you know what? I can't. But you know who can? The Holy Spirit of God. The Holy Spirit of God. He comes together with your spirit and He reminds you of who God is. And it reminds you of His love. Many times our ears are not open, we're not listening, and we, we go through an entire day thinking, well, eh, nobody cares about what happened to me today. Nobody really cares about what's happening with my life. I see all these other people caring for other people. But, well, you know, if we will listen, if we will listen, we will hear the voice of God speaking to us through His Word, through His Holy Spirit. We will hear Him. But we've got to listen. We've got to listen. Easter people are people who trust in God when life is dark and stormy and there seems to be no hope. They are people who endure even through circum even though circumstances seem impossible. Why? Because they serve a God of the possible. They serve a God of the possible. Nothing is impossible with Him. Easter people, like they live victoriously because while it looks like a hopeless Good Friday world with, full of sadness, Jesus has provided hope and salvation. And that is something about which we can be and need to be upbeat, happy, and joyful about. I mean, this is the day. I mean, this is Easter. And every day is, if you will, Easter because we have the joy of the Lord. The joy of the Lord in us. Let me ask you, are you an Easter person? If you are, let the world see it. By all means, let the world see it. Let them see you following God. Let them see you... Uh, living as a changed person let them see the change that has taken place live out before the world the Jesus that is in you Easter people need to live in a hope filled God focused Easter world Good Friday is past it is over look there is a new day and hope in Christ every day for Easter people People need to know about Jesus, and they cannot know. They cannot know if you're living a life that says everything stopped when he died on the cross. It was all over. I mean, I, I read in the Bible and see and how wonderful everything. You know, he walked. He had 12 disciples. They walked with him and talked with him, and there were people that he healed. And, oh, he was great, but then he died, and it's all over. If you are an Easter person and you're living that way, let me ask you to talk a, have a long talk. I'm not talking about a little talk with Jesus. I'm talking about a long talk with Jesus. Take some time to consider who you are in Christ. Because this world needs to see people who are walking with Jesus. They need it. It's, it look, we're not at a point where we just hope that some of us do that. Well, I hope some of us here do. No, no, no. Y you, <laughs> me, we... But it's an individual you, between you and the Lord living for Jesus out in this world to where they see it. They need to see it. People need 
to know who Jesus is. Are you a person living in a Good Friday world of pain and sadness? Maybe you're someone who has not received Christ into your heart. Maybe you're living in this world looking at it thinking, man, it's not going to be much longer. This whole place is just going to go blow away. I mean, it's, we're in scary times once again in our world. Are you a person living in a Good Friday world of pain? If so, there's hope for you. There's hope for you. The Bible tells us that if you confess with your mouth Jesus as Lord and believe in your heart that God raised Him from the dead, you will be saved. That's what the Bible says. For with the heart a person believes, resulting in righteousness. And with the mouth he confesses, resulting in salvation. Oh, man. If you're here this morning, you've never made that choice. You've never made that decision to follow Jesus. You've never said, look, I, I am a sinner. I need Jesus. I need to be forgiven of my sins. Maybe today you need to make that decision. Not put it off, but make it today. Maybe today is that day for you. Maybe you're sitting here thinking, whoa, 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 preacher. I got some more questions. Hey, I'm here. I'm not going anywhere. Call me this week. Talk to me. I'd love to talk with you. Let's, let's see if we can answer some of those questions. Let's see if we can get into what it is you, that's holding you back. Maybe there's something holding you back. But you don't have to live in this Good Friday world where there is no hope. You don't have to live like that. You can live with hope. You can live victoriously. And that's what God wants for us. Are you an Easter person living in a Good Friday world? Or are you a Good Friday person who needs the hope of Christ? Are you an Easter person living in an Easter world? Hey, I'm living victoriously. I've got Jesus with me. I'm not letting anything get me all the way down to the bottom. Because Christ is with me. Maybe you're one of those, an Easter person living in an Easter world. Or maybe you're a Good Friday person in need of Christ today. We're going to have a time of response right now. A time where we're going to sing a hymn. And as we sing, we're going to sing uh, the nail-scarred hand. And as we sing, I want you to come. If the Lord is leading you to come and you need to make that decision to follow Christ, I want you to come. Maybe you're here this morning and you're thinking, you know what? I know somebody that, I, that I've been praying for. Pray for them. Pray for them. This is the most important decision a person can ever make. What to do with Jesus? What to do with Jesus? Accept Him or reject Him? Would you pray? Let's, let's stand and sing. Have you failed in your heart? Are you scared just right? Raise your hand, the nails for God. Are you weary and worn, but you torn and strong? Raise your hand, the nails for God. Raise your hand. leave this place today. <clears throat> May the peace of His Holy Spirit dwell in you. May you experience His love as you go through the rest of this day and the next and the next. And remember, this world needs what you have. 
This world needs Jesus. Praise be to God. You're dismissed.